Hello, my fellow Whovians, and welcome to the fourth and I think final part of my review of the Doctor Who epic, The Trial of a Time Lord, starring Colin Baker in his final performance as the sixth Doctor. So basically, just to wrap up my review of Trial of a Time Lord in general, being that this is four stories in one, an epic 14-episode saga in Doctor Who, um... I liked it. I'll give Trial of a Time Lord overall a passing grade, but it's a real uneven mixed bag. Again, the format of, of doing one single 14-episode story, more or less, it's pretty jarring, and it's long to sit through, and I'm just glad that you know, they never made Doctor Who like this ever again. Because in my opinion, it's not the way Doctor Who should be done. Doing Doctor Who like this, doing one story that takes up the entire season. As a one-off experiment, I can live with it. And it's decent enough. It certainly has its moments of entertainment. The cast certainly try hard throughout. Uh, Colin Baker giving it everything he's got as the sixth Doctor. Nicola Bryant in her final story as Perry. Well, we're going to miss you, Nicola. Thank you so much, Nicola Bryant, for your wonderful work as Perry. And the addition of new companion Mel, played by Bonnie Langford. Again, I'm no fan of Mel once we get to Sylvester McCoy. But in her one story with Colin Baker, okay, I admit she wasn't so bad, even though she still screamed a little bit. But it's only going to get a whole lot worse when we get to Sylvester McCoy. But here, Bonnie Langford, not so bad as Mel. Uh, the courtroom scenes are good, but the fact that the courtroom scenes keep interrupting the main stories all throughout, it just makes Trial of a Time Lord a very, very uneven story. And yet, I'm going to say, there's just enough entertaining stuff going on in Trial of a Time Lord to keep it afloat. So I'm going to give the Trial of a Time Lord a marginal pass of two and a half out of four stars overall. Two and a half out of four stars for The Trial of a Time Lord. And now I gotta lead into what I've gotta lead into, being that this story wound up being the final story for Colin Baker, and it's such a damn shame. It makes me so angry that it did wind up being his final story. Colin Baker was treated very badly on Doctor Who, all things considered. He came in during a time when the ratings were going down, uh, next thing you know, Colin Baker gets criticized for playing the Doctor a little too aggressively. He gets criticized for the loud, you know, clownish outfit that he wore. He gets blamed for the violence that was on the show. Why is it Colin Baker's fault that there was violence on Doctor Who? Why don't you blame John Nathan Turner for that? Then the next thing you know, uh, the Doctor Who series goes on an 18-month hiatus after Colin Baker finishes his first season. And then when Doctor Who finally comes back, it's this 14-episode mega-epic, Trial of a Time Lord, in which not only is the Doctor on trial, but behind the scenes, the actor playing the Doctor, Colin Baker, was also on trial. A trial that, sadly, he would eventually lose, as he would ultimately be fired from the role. The only actor in the history of Doctor Who to actually get fired from the role. And again, uh, Colin Baker wasn't fired by producer John Nathan Turner. He got fired by the BBC controller at the time, Michael Grade, who just didn't like Colin Baker's portrayal of the Doctor, thinking that uh, Colin Baker's portrayal of the Doctor was not popular with the public, that it was one of the reasons why the show's ratings weren't so good, and that uh, Michael Grade decided in his infinite wisdom that two seasons of Colin Baker as the Doctor was enough, and that no... Uh, the show would not go on for another season unless Colin Baker was dismissed from the role, which John Nathan Turner reluctantly had to do. And so the next thing Colin Baker knew, he was given the boot. He tried to come back for one more season. He asked if he could come back for one more season, you know, with John Nathan Turner acting as mediator between him and Michael Grade. Michael Grade said, no, you're not coming back. The Doctor Who series needs a new actor, an actor who's more appealing, so sorry, you're not coming back to do another season. John Nathan Turner did go to bat for Colin Baker one more time, and he said to Michael Gregg, look, can Colin Baker at least come back for one more story? Just one more story so we can regenerate him into his successor, whoever that winds up being? And at that, Michael Grade, BBC controller, said... Okay, yeah, fine, you can bring back Colin Baker for one more story, but that's it. And we move on to the next Doctor. Well, John Nathan Turner told Colin Baker that Michael Grade said, you can come back for one more story. Colin Baker wasn't having any of that. Who can blame him? Colin Baker was like, 
oh yeah, yeah, Michael Gray wants me to come back for one more story just so he can kill off my doctor and fit in with his plans. Well, John Nathan Turner, you can tell Michael Gray to go screw himself because I'm not coming back. And uh, who can blame Colin Baker for being angry? Who can blame him for being pissed? He was treated horribly. He went in there and gave us the best doctor he possibly could, and in the end he got treated like shit just because the ratings went down and uh, he had to get the blame for the ratings going down. That's not fair. It's also not uh, Colin Baker's fault that the show had some violence in it. I like the new aggressive direction the Doctor Who went into with Colin Baker. And in my personal opinion, Colin Baker was treated very unfairly. He's a much better Doctor than he's given credit for. And I think it's a damn shame that uh, he only got to do it for two seasons. But for two seasons, Colin Baker was the Doctor. And in my opinion, he did a great job. He will always be a controversial Doctor. Not all the Doctor Who fans like him. But uh, Colin Baker cannot be blamed for the loud costume he had to wear. He cannot be blamed for the violence that was on the show. I think he was a very good doctor. I thought he was definitely uh, tough. He didn't suffer fools gladly. And I like that about Colin Baker's sixth doctor. He will always be a controversial doctor, but he's a doctor that is very near and dear to my heart. And I think his doctor should have been received much better than he actually was. So... A toast to the sixth doctor, Colin Baker. Colin, I don't care what anybody else says. You were a great doctor. You did a great job as the doctor for those two seasons. And I salute you. I salute you, Colin Baker, the sixth doctor. And that's my review of The Trial of a Time Lord. So, next time on Doctor Who Review, I shall review the debut story of the seventh doctor, the final Doctor of the classic Doctor Who series, Sylvester McCoy, Time and the Ranny. It also features the return of the late great Kate O'Mara as the Ranny, and Doctor Who will never be the same again. Time and the Ranny, next time on Doctor Who Review. Oh boy, this is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time for Sylvester McCoy's debut as the seventh Doctor, in time and the ranny.